For our slab building project, we're going to start by cutting some clay off the block. This tool is just a wire with handles attached. To use it, I want to line up the wire around the clay and then pull it towards me, making sure to keep it straight and level. This is another wire cutting tool, but it holds the wire in place for you. Just keep the black bar flush against the clay as you pull it towards you. I weigh the clay to make sure I have enough for what I'm trying to make. For a mug, I need about a pound and a quarter to a pound and a half. We're going to make our slabs using a rolling pin and some slats of wood to keep the thickness even. So looking at my project template, I can see that I will need to stretch this clay out to be longer and also slightly taller. I'll usually start with the shorter side, which is going to be the height of this piece. My wood pieces are placed so that the rolling pin can rest on top of them. It only takes a small amount to get the short side stretched out, so now I rotate the clay so that I can work out the length. I start at the middle and push the clay forward and back incrementally. I flip the clay over to make sure it's not sticking to the tabletop and to apply the pressure to both sides of the slab. I'm going to refer to the template to make sure we're getting the right shape. There is enough now to cut out this rectangle, but I want to keep going until the rolling pin is running flush against the wood slats. At this point, the clay is now the same thickness as the wood and will be an even slab. The clay needs to be compressed further with a metal rib tool. With medium pressure, I smooth the tool across the surface of the clay. This needs to be done to both sides. The metal rib tool is deceptively sharp, so don't touch the edge with your fingers. Drag the tool across a sponge if you need to clean it. To cut out my piece, I'll lay the template on top with a straight edge to cut against. Make sure to keep the knife straight up and down. These cutoff pieces can be used for the bottom of the project. I flip the clay and rotate it as I go so that it becomes round. This project is going to be a mug, so I want to soften one edge for the rim. I just run my finger along the edge to knock back some of the sharpness. These short edges will be joined together, so I'm going to angle cut them so that they'll meet up flush. This is another tool with a little wire on it that will help me make cuts that match. Then I use a scoring tool to rough up where I cut. Flip the clay the long way and repeat with those tools. Now I'm ready to stand the slab up, taking care not to stretch it out while handling it. A cardboard tube helps me press the slab into a round shape. A small amount of water is added to the scored edge to help the frayed edges lock together. I think of it as Velcro with super glue. I carefully position the edges with my fingers and start to smooth out the seam. I'll use various tools to blend in the seam on the outside and inside. When cleaning up the inside, make sure the pressure is braced by your hand or the tabletop. Something tapered, like this terracotta pot, helps to check the roundness of the opening. Now I need to pick out which one of my circle cutters will make a base to fit over the bottom of this mug. If you have a stamp, this would be a good time to stamp the base. 
As with all attachments, we need to score up the clay and add a little water for our clay Velcro. I like it to get extra frayed here because that excess material will help me seal up the inner seam. Bring your two pieces together and make sure they're lined up where you want them. I like to move up to a banding wheel at this point. I put some gentle pressure downwards onto the base and give it a little tap. With a wooden shaper tool, I pull up excess clay from the base upwards to merge with the cylinder. When the two pieces are well combined, I scrape off extra clay with a straight edged tool. The soft side of paintbrush bristles are the best tool for cleaning up the inside seam. Drag the brush around on the inside where the two pieces of clay meet. Here's a cutaway view so you can see what's going on on the inside. If the clay still isn't completely merged, use a rubber tip tool with the same sweeping motion. I'll make some handle options while the cylinder is set aside to stiffen up. Slab handles can be made by cutting out long strips of clay. I smooth the edges the same way we smoothed the rim for the mug. You only need to bevel the edges if you're closing the shape on itself. This strip I'm forming into an oval shape. Look around for objects the clay can be bent around. Like we used the cardboard tube earlier, I can use this piece of wood to bend around. You can also cut shapes out of a slab to make interesting handles. Keep in mind that our clay will shrink about 10%, so leave extra room to fit your hand. Always gather up your clay scraps while you work and wrap them in plastic so they don't dry out. Decide where to place your handle. Use a needle tool to mark the connection points on the mug. Give both pieces a good scoring, add your water, and put some pressure on the pieces to seal them together. Use the paintbrush or rubber tip tool to clean up around the handle. Handles with smaller contact points will benefit from some more reinforcement. After attaching the handle, take a small coil of soft clay and blend around the attachment points. Find a tool that's the size you need to get in small spaces. Finish cleanup with a paintbrush. Taking time to add in this extra clay will greatly reduce cracking at the attachment points. After the project is complete, it should be covered in plastic to slow the rate of drying. Wrap the plastic tighter if you wish to reduce the piece from drying even more. Drying time varies, but a couple weeks is common. All the water should be evaporated out of the clay before it gets fired in the kiln.